Hi, I'm Miss Stapleton. And I'm Mr. Kazi. Uh, we're from Graden School in London, and this is our AQA A certification uh, year one vlog that we're going to do every couple of weeks just to take you through some of the key things that our students have found difficult in those last couple of weeks, just in terms of what we've been studying. So at the moment, I'm doing research methods and Mr. Cars is doing the approaches. I'm just going to spend a few minutes just outlining some of the key difficulties from the last couple of weeks. Um, so the first topic that we looked at was approaches, um, as Ms Stapleton's just said, and there were a number of areas that students did find challenging, the most being the A01 part of um, understanding behaviourism. Now, I'm sure you're all aware of the Pavlov's dogs experiment, so I'm not going to go through that, but adding additional detail to the A01 for Pavlov's dogs is what will set you apart from the rest. Uh, one thing to bear in mind, or the first thing to bear, bear in mind of the other important features is timing. Now if the neutral stimulus of the bell is, comes much later than the unconditioned stimulus of food, the conditioning won't necessarily take place. The second is extinction. Um, and that is where if you show the conditioned stimulus, so that's the bell again, without the unconditioned stimulus of food, repeatedly the response to salivate will also go away. So the conditioned response is not permanent. Uh, recovery is the third one. So if you pair the bell, the conditioned stimulus, and the unconditioned stimulus of food, again, the association can be made again. And finally, generalization. Um, the animals will respond to other stimuli that are similar to the conditioned stimulus that was the bell. So think of the dogs salivating when they hear a car horn or a doorbell or a ringtone on from a phone, something like that. Now, uh, with regards to the AO3, and that is the evaluation part, um, there are a number of links that can be made to research methods. Now, with the behavioral approach, um, it's, it's important to make sure that those links are clear. Uh, first of all, it being highly controlled because it was conducted in a laboratory setting. Um, and because of that, it's, it's regarded as being scientific and that gives the behavioural approach credibility. Um, additionally, uh, because it was done in a lab, uh, we're able to find a causal relationship between those two variables. Um, so that was a brief summary of uh, what we found difficult in approaches this week. Cool, um, so for research methods, just some really, really straightforward stuff. One of the things that's always been a problem, new spec or no new spec, is the operationalising of the dependent variable. So operationalising just means make it measurable. So one of the key ones is always the dependent variable of memory, let's say, would, be become, would become number of items recalled. So it's a key, key thing. Always check that you're operationalising the DV and also the IV as well. Uh, another issue that we have is the pilot study type questions that we often get where you're asked to identify issues within an experiment that a pilot study might need to check, let's say, and you spend a lot of time describing what a pilot study is and not enough time picking out particular features of that experiment that you might need to look at in a pilot study. So again, really important for the exam. Um, a classic is getting experimental method and experimental design confused. Happens a lot. So one technique I always give to students to help them remember is a breaking bad reference and think where is meth made? Meth is made in a lab, so it should bring you to lab, field, natural, and quasi, which is also something that students are finding a little bit difficult just to kind of set clear in their head. So a quasi experiment is simply where the IV, you can't have random allocation, so in that sense it's not a true experiment. A true experiment obviously should have that random allocation. The reason you can't have random allocation is because the IV is a feature normally of that individual, for example, gender or age, so it's not something that the experimenter can manipulate. So those are just the key research method things from this week. We'll be coming uh, over the next couple of weeks kind of with more and more stuff each time. If you've got any questions, you can always tweet us and follow us at Graden P. And if you subscribe to us on YouTube, just like you can do below, then you can see our videos that we're putting up every couple of weeks. Cool. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.